Michelle. Hi, baby. Now, Peter, you, apparently you were in, on Broadway a minute ago when you saw Dear Dare Evan. Dare Evan Hansen. Evan Hansen. That's the hit show. Everybody's talking about that show. I'm cl- First of all, let me just take What's a minute. What's it about? We're going to stop one second. Uh-huh. We're going to revere and just enjoy this moment of you knowing what uh-huh. the hottest ticket on Broadway is right now. Well, I read the papers. You I'm know. very proud of you, ah. RuPaul. How'd well, you get tickets? Um, Todrick. <laughs> Todrick. Yep. Todrick had to beg and plead because let me tell you something, I wasn't getting them. And uh, Todrick really did it as a favor to me because he literally said, you're not going to come see this the night before you come see me. I'm going to guess this is not about the music, 90s pop music group, The Hansons. It is absolutely not Mbop. Uh-huh. No. The musical. It's um, It's about... Mental illness, really. It's, oh, it's, one of my favorite. Yes, topics. well, you fit right in. It's about depression, yeah. really. Okay, so so it's a laugh riot. No, absolutely not. I mean, I, I know you're being sarcastic, but this is this is the story. Um, Ben Platt, who's the lead guy, you might know him from Pitch Perfect. If he's never done an episode of Murder, she wrote, I don't know who he Did is. Did you see Pitch Perfect? No. You never saw a pitch? Oh, yeah. I saw, yeah. Oh, I know Ben Platt. Yes. I actually, I saw him. I met him in New York recently. Yes. You did? Uh, he was backstage at something. Uh, he was there. He's cute. Uh, he's straight, too. Adorable. Yes. He's cute. He's sexy. Very Jewish looking. You know what? He kind of looks like this one over here, our producer. I guess, like here. I said, very Jewish looking. Yeah. He was the original Elder Cunningham in the Book of Mormon. Yes. Uh, in, I want to say, in Chicago. I think the Chicago, because Elder Cunningham, I think, was Josh Gad in the original on, in New York. Yeah, I believe so. Or Elder Pro, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, whatever. Um, he is going to win a Tony. Okay. 100%. He gives all of himself. Is there nudity? Completely to this role. There's no nudity. Oh. So it's about. So he didn't really give everything. I, Rue, I can't. I aspire to be what he is every night wow. in that show. So it's about, um, I don't want to ruin it for everybody. Well, no, just give the cliff notes. Don't ruin it's it. It's about depression in uh, high school time, yeah. how it's exploited. Mm-hmm. Um, and no music. And, uh, yeah. Oh, it's a musical. It's a musical. And there's and how a lie gets blown out of proportion. Uh-huh. Put it that way. Ben Platt is a baby. He's 23 years old. Um, he is just so, so so talented yeah. in this show. And the, the whole cast is fantastic, but he is beyond. And um, the music is fantastic. The music works with, uh, obviously, what a musical. Who sometimes, wrote the music? Um, sometimes, uh, let me look it up. Sometimes in musicals, you feel like the songs don't make sense. You're like, where did that, why did are that happen? Are they good happen? songs? Are they Broadway songs? Are they, they are, I'm depressed. It's yes, a, I'm depressed. Alex, Alex Lackamore. Uh-huh. Uh, composers are Benj Pasek and Justin Paul. And I could be saying those names completely wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, the music are very, um, the music are very. Uh-huh, that's very the good music, English. The music are very, uh, <laughs> it's very pop music. Oh, good. I, you know, I like for that. For Broadway, yeah. Because, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of the yes, make you up are. the lines. I mean, you, you kind of are. You say you're not, but you've seen everything. <laughs> so you you kind of are. Pasek <laughs> they they did they're doing Flash the musical. Um, Wait, oh, okay. hold on a minute. They might have done La La Land. Ah. Um. So let's see. Okay. So you went to go see this show, and you said it's it's really really good. Is it too long? Is there an intermission? There's absolutely not a second too long of this show. Uh. It is by far the best thing that I've seen in a Why do you think it's connected with audiences so well? Um, I think because there's, okay, so they did music on, first let me finish this. Oh God. Trolls. They did the music from the Trolls? Yes. Which is the best movie of the year. There you go. Yeah. La La Land, Dear Evan Hansen, A Christmas Story, the musical. Oh, Music and Smash, which I love. Mm -hmm. I love the music and Smash. I didn't know they did that. They were songwriters on season two. Right. Not everybody's a Broadway queen. Get on with your story. Okay. okay. Thank you for moving me along. Mm-hmm. So I think people are relating to it because of his performance, because it's so believable and so real. And he's um, a kid being raised by a single mom who has to work and he's kind of left on his own. And he's uh, not special, but he's real geeky. Yeah. And he doesn't, he's so socially awkward, doesn't know how to handle himself. And um, he gets, he has a crush on a girl and that's okay, kind of got, how the got, story got, starts. Got it, got it, got it. So why are audiences connecting with this one? Because Every- he is a relatable character that exists. And this is a premiere In show. everybody's life. No one has done this show Correct. before. This okay. is a 
brand new Broadway production. I'll have to go see it when I'm, and I'm it's there. One hundred percent because it's really about him and his performance. Again, the whole ca- cast is phenomenal. With he, no nudity. No nudity. He uh. carries the whole thing, but it's beyond. I can't even tell you if you get a chance to go see it. I'm as excited as as I was about Hamilton about this. You know what? Um, a years ago, I saw this Paul Rudnick play called the. Gr- I'm going to get the title wrong. Um, it's called The Greatest Story Ever Told. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And Paul Rudnick, who's genius, he's the screenwriter of um, Adam's Family 2, and, and he's written some books. Um, his, book, his latest book he's is called... He's an intellect. Yeah, he's so funny. Uh, anyway, um, and there was this gorgeous nudity in the show. It's a really... Leah, I think Leah Delaria was in the show, the one I saw off-Broadway. Right. Um but oh my god, it was so good. Well, the thing is, I think for me, I think all shows should, all Broadway shows should have nudity. If it makes sense, what? Like old Calcutta yeah. was all nude, yeah, and the music was like, eh. Yeah, but still. But for me, if um, I'm paying those prices, Michelle. It's. It, I want to see nudity. You you will cry your eyes out. By the end of Act One, I was sobbing, uh, sobbing by really? myself, and I do not cry because of the music or because um, of his acting. Because of the combination of the the song at the kind of height. Of that moment. Yeah. And that's how it ends, the first act. And it was like, oh, my God. Wow. Yeah. Hey, you know, our our special guest on our show today is one of those kind of actors who is just, he just, this motherfucker knows how to do it. I agree with you. and Dennis I, O'Hara is on our show. Yes. And you said, you, you agree with me and you... I fell in love with him in True Blood. Right. See, I, I knew of him, I think uh, that, that Michael, um, there was that... Uh, uh, George Clooney movie. I think that's the first time I, uh, Michael Clayton. Michael oh, Clayton. Yeah. 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 Um, Is that yeah. Liam Neeson? No. Michael Clayton wasn't Liam Neeson. I don't think. Oh my so. god. I, could I think be it's, totally yeah, wrong. yeah. He will ask him. But um, uh, that was when I recognized that he's the guy who's been in everything. He is so effing talented. Yeah. He really, really is. Um, but he he is really, and the funny thing is, he's he's a little thing. And he packs such a punch in everything that he does. He's really, he was in um, Dallas Buyers Club as well as Milk. Um, uh, but for me, it was True Blood. And, you know, American Horror Story, yes, all yes, that yes, stuff. And so many movies, just so talented. You know, the thing is that all of those actors like that have, have, have spent the hard yards on Broadway in New York and really... Like the 10,000 hours they talk about in those uh, Malcolm Gladwell books. Yeah. Where people have well, you spent become, so yeah. much time not making it. Look at Viola Davis. You know, she, um, she'd been around forever on Broadway and doing amazing. theater. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Now, at, in her 50s, she's getting all of this yeah, acclaim. I don't know where I got Liam Neeson from. You're right, George Clooney. Michael Clayton. Yeah. No, there, I'm sure there's a, another, uh, there's another another movie with Liam Neeson in it that's a similar title. I feel like my, anything with a name with title. With an Irish name. Michael, uh, Liam Neeson's going to star in it. Yeah. But this guy has done, there's nothing he hasn't done. Right. Dennis O'Hare. He is so. Can he bake a cherry pie? I'm sure he can. Uh. With his toes. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. Russell Edgington. That sounds delicious. I know. Russell Edgington on, on True Blood was a character that, you. it's so layered. When people can do characters with layers like yeah. a seven layer dip. Yeah. I get really excited because then for me, not only is this is intriguing, but people aren't realizing why it's so intriguing. Right. But you have a split. Lisa Kudrow can do that. Yes, yeah, she can. Layer, 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 and layer. And it's not easy. Yeah. Because when you watch the comeback with Lisa Kudrow, you feel bad for her. But at mm-hmm. the same time, you're laughing at her, laughing with mm-hmm. her. You're feeling that awkward feeling when she's, you know, do, looking into the camera yes. and, and uh, who needs to see that? Uh. You know, like, but Dennis O'Hare on True Blood, you hated him so much, but he had such love and yeah. a soft spot spot in your heart. The way he looked at, you know, um, that gorgeous what's his face? Oh yeah, the the uh, Dane. No, the yes, um, him, him, Swede, the, the yes, Swede. Yeah, yes. yeah. Um, Tarzan. Yes, that. <laughs> I mean, it's not terrible. Skarsgård. Wait a minute. Yes, Alexander Skarsgård. Thank you. Yeah. Um, what's his face? North Northman. Eric Northman. Oh my God, I just pulled that out of my ass. I have no idea who, oh, that's what the character's name? Yes. Eric so he, you need, to, or Northman, you need to watch True Blood. Have you never? I've seen it. I, you, I, I've i seen it. You know, I saw probably no the first season. It's a season. great show. I, I, um, I, great show? I saw the first season. I liked the nudity. 
but Ru, Ru, it's a great show. Uh, and I I would dip into it a few times just to see Joe Mang oh, run honey, across the lawn with no clothes what on. What a relationship. What a married couple those are. Joe Mang Joe Mangello. Yeah. And Sofia Vergara. I yeah. mean, imagine the sex that happens there. Oh, do I have to? I mean, I'd like to. <laughs> but but going back to True Blood, I really I'm I'm recommending you watch the whole thing. Yeah. But so did you see anything else on Broadway? Um, no, because I didn't have time. Oh, that's right. You were working. Yes. And right. You were going to see. I was going to see Kinky Boots, but then I got out late because I was shooting something for Logo. So my intention is to get back before that closes. Yeah. Which this could be airing after. Right. Because it closes March 5th because he's got the, the straight out of Oz tour happening again. And that's starting in April, I think. So he doesn't have a lot of time to get that together. Oh my goodness. Yeah, he doesn't Well, stop. I got to see him on his opening night. Um, oh, show off. Yes. Well, maybe I'll brilliant. see him on his closing night. I think he will. I yeah. think he will. Maybe I'll go see it again, too. I'll be in New York before that, so I'll get to see see that. Good, we'll go together. Yeah. Um, what else is showing on Broadway that we need to know well, about? Well, uh, Bette Midler. Oh, she's going to be doing- Hello, uh, Dolly. That's right. But so that's not this season. And then, is Glenn Close still doing yeah. Sunset Boulevard there? Okay, so hold on. I hear- She's coming back to do Dolly. That is going to be Dolly. Glenn Close, Sunset Boulevard. Is that happening now? Ha- not yet. March, I think. I think they both start at the same time. Mm. So talk about the dueling divas right there. Mm-hmm. And have you ever seen or heard anything of Glenn Close? That role is phenomenal. Right. I've seen someone else. I saw Diane <coughs> Carroll. Uh, uh, not her, the correct pronunciation. I Diane just, Carroll, I right. say it that way because I like saying it that way. Uh, Diane Carroll. I saw Diane Carroll do Sunset Boulevard in Toronto. So right. I said, didn't do you the said it right. Tea. Correct. Didn't go Toronto. I said Toronto. Right. And it was brilliant. Yeah. Glenn Close is Unreal in this of world. She's getting unreal in everything I mean, she does. She really is brilliant. People don't brilliant. know the brilliance of her. Oh, uh, they do know. No, the wait. Brilliance in a musical. Oh, Pe- the kids don't know that. Uh-huh. They know Bunny Boiler in uh, Fatal Attraction. Well, but no, come on. Everything she's done since oh. then, uh, damages. That's for crazy. Think she's any anything she's ever done. Period. Oh my yeah. god. So in this role, her that's a big deal. That could be Sunset a Sunset right Boulevard. There. She did it again in London. Yes, that's where it and started. She's bringing it back. Bringing it back. Uh, Bette Midler and, and we say did it again because she she originated the role didn't she of uh, Norma Desmond I th- think so I think she did I they had so. gotten they had gotten uh, Faye Dunaway had a falling out Faye sued did uh, they ever and, do a movie they didn't do the movie no no Faye Dunaway sued I believe Andrew Lloyd Webber and then they oh got, that was a mess wasn't it they got uh, Glenn Close yes so she's coming back oh god I would love to have seen Faye Dunaway in it oh my god I mean who wouldn't oh my um, god yeah, Andrew Lloyd Webber, um, and then the the tea that I just found out mm. is I heard that uh, La Lapone uh-huh. might be throwing herself in there to shake shit up because you can't have oh, into the, the into something oh. to compete with Hello Dolly and Sunset Boulevard. Maybe she's gonna pull up with some Carrie, or maybe she's gonna pull up with some side by side. Who knows? Oh, who knows what's she gonna do? Oh, it's uh, a sideshow. Oh, sideshow. Yeah, uh, Vita, the oldest of Vita ever. Ooh. Um, she can do anything. Ooh, wouldn't it be great? For years, they've been talking about the Mommy Dearest musical. Ver- what if uh, Lapone did Mommy Dearest the musical? I mean, could you imagine? I'd be there in a heartbeat. But she's a little bitty thing, isn't she? Patty I Lepone? bet she is. Yeah. No, she's short. Yeah. <clears throat> but they, they all are. I, I just can't wait to see. Um, I want to see Bette Midler. I want to see Glenn Close. This is going to be like a thing where we're going to have to go night. After night, after night. Right. Now I'm going to have to more. You know, I house. told you I was obsessed with 30 Rock now that I'm a Netflix queen. And Patti LuPone plays the mother huh. of one of the writers right. on the show. Of course, I fell in love with Patti LuPone on, before he even knew about the Broadway stuff. Um, was um, oh. Life Goes On. Oh, right. Life Goes On. Ooh, right. Bloody, ooh, blah, blah. Yeah. So that's where I fell Wait, in love. Wait, that was a TV show, right? It was. And yeah. that's because I didn't know about Patti. I didn't, again... When I grew up with Broadway, it was what was ever in the house. So if West Side Story was in the house, I would play it, it on the Fiddler record player. on the Roof was on the, Fiddler, in the house. Fiddler was always there. It's Fiddler's yeah. one of my favorites of yeah. all time. Yeah. Um, so I didn't find out about Patty until like college days. Right. When I was in college and people were talking about Patty the Pwn and, and Evita Ev- Ev- and everything. And I was like, oh, yeah. that's when I got into Patty and Bernadette. Well, I can't wait to get back to New York and do some shows. Use my... Today ticks? Did you use today ticks? No, you uh, got him to give you the tickets. You are you? correct, but yeah. I was looking stuff up. I would have used today ticks if I was there longer. Yeah. Oh, I love me some today ticks. And then here in LA, Fun Home is coming. Oh, We're gonna my go God. see that. Yes. When I does it start? Wait. Starts in February. February twenty first. <coughs> yeah, can't wait. 
That's at the Pantages, I think. The or Pan- no, no, Amundsen. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to see, see I gotta that. learn how to take the train because I can't get to a show. Can't you drive? I can drive, but if a show starts at 7 or 8, that's the middle of traffic in L.A. And I've just got to say this. Sorry. i got to get this off my chest. Say it. There are twice as many cars in L.A. as there are parking spaces. Yes. Nobody talks about it. Yes. They talk about the traffic, but nobody says... There are twice as many cars as there are because, parking spaces. Baby, they don't make it easy to take public transit. No, they don't. It's not like New York City. It's not like Mammoth, for God's sake. It's not yeah. like London where you can jump on the tube. Yeah. There, that doesn't exist here. And if there is, we have this little kind of subway system. It ends in North Hollywood. It doesn't go anywhere. Well, it, it does go downtown. And I when we go see Fun Home, you're going to park at my house. We're going to uh, catch the train. Down to the Amundsen Theater, or otherwise we'd have to be downtown, have lunch, downtown at lunch, uh, fine. do some shopping, fine, and then wait around. Is the Amundsen downtown? It is. It's yeah. it's next to the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion. Oh, yeah. You know what that is? For years and years and years, the Academy Award was at the Dorothy yeah, Chandler course. Pavilion, live from the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion. Exactly. Yeah. And it, and it's really beautiful, by the way. Um, but the we'll Amundsen's have to. I'll just drive down there for lunch. I will put my no, car. No, 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 no. We gonna catch. We gonna catch the train. I ain't catching no train. Yes, we are gonna catch the, From the where? train. Lets out right there. We catch the train at Hollywood and Highland. Hollywood and Highland, where the office yeah. is, and then it takes us right down. Where is the train at? The train. Um, I think we can get out. I, it's. Uh, you don't know. No, no, no. <laughs> I do, you're gonna I do. get my ass lost. You, you're, you're, out, you're right. We'll have to do some research, but it does let you out right there at the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It do. Mm-hmm. We may have to switch trains. Okay, see? This is what I don't that's because I don't know. We can just get on in the car and drive. No, but we'll be sitting in traffic and I can't take the traffic. Why do you think we're gonna be sitting? And after the show, everybody gets their car and you have to wait in line for out of the parking lot. I hate that. Okay, that's true. You know? Yeah, that's true. Like at a concert. Like, I'm not going to go to see the Staples Singers. See, the see who? The Staples Singers <laughs> to see Beyonce. I thought you were going to go see the, the Staples Singers. Staples Singers. I was the Staples Singers at that. I can't I'm going say. to the Staples Singers down to the Staples Center. <laughs> <laughs> God, I love the Staples Singers. Maybe the Staples. Yeah. I got to see Prince's tour when he had Mavis oh, when Staples. she was on there. Yeah, she singing. was on his label yeah. for a long time. That was amazing. Yeah. Really, really amazing. So Fun Home is coming down there. A lot of good stuff. I see a lot of good stuff down there. Yeah. You know? I haven't I haven't gone enough. I really need to. Because um, you could, because you're, if you're coming from up there, at Calabasas, you, I, I don't know, how far does it go up to that area, the train? It doesn't. I bet the Metro Rail does. It stops at North Hollywood. But there's a Metro Rail that goes further out there. You got to get online. You got a computer right there. These are not slave days. Nobody's stopping you. You are so stupid. No, it's true. Metro, what's it called? It's called the Metro Rail. As if. Yeah. And then they have the Metro Rail and they have Isn't there a Metro Link or something? Yes. Metro Link, I think, goes out there. LA Metro. And then this is why it makes it confusing because, and they may be connected. Honey, there's different color lines. I know. There's red and silver. Are you going to play the race card now? Oh, I can't breathe. Oh, God, this is freaking me out already. Why can't is I just... Is there a map right there? Does I'm, pull, show? I'm pulling up the map. Uh, it goes to Chatsworth. Is it goes that by to, you? Hell no. Uh, it goes to... Ch- oh, it goes to Canoga. Canoga Canu- Park. Uh, yeah. That's... Is that how you say it? Canoga Park, yeah. Canoga Park. And then it goes down to Artesia, 5th Street. Oh, yeah, street, that's down... 1st Street, Anaheim what? Street. Oh, that's way, way past down. Past Compton. No, that's, yeah, oh, that's all down near uh, Disneyland. Oh, downtown L.A., down here, 7th Street, Pico. See, because um, Anaheim and all that, that's Disneyland. Yeah. How far, so as it only goes to Canoga Park, that's how close it gets to you? Okay, in order for us, to, to for me, to get to downtown, yeah, I'd have to take the orange line to the red line to the blue line, bitch. Uh-huh. That's three, two transfers. Yeah. I got a car. Yeah, I know you got a car. I got, I got a car. I got keys, and I got I got insurance, I got and I got gas in my car. I got a car, but I don't want to sit in traffic. I also I got wanna... roller skates. I, well, you know, I think I, I think it's something we need to investigate. We're going to take um, a break. I just did. We have de- <laughs> we have Dennis O'Hare on. I'm the not show. digging the orange to the red to the blue, <laughs> and there might even be a purple in there. We'll be right back. <laughs> 
Now, M- Michelle, everybody needs extra money. Am I right? I mean, who can say no thanks? Exactly. Well, that's where Lyft comes in. Lyft is the ride sharing app that lets you be your own boss. You get to pick your own hours and earn up to $1,500 a week driving your own car. Which, by the way, you're doing anyway. You're going to be doing it anyway. So why not make money doing it? Why not? Exactly. And we have a special offer for you, too. Sign up today at lyft.com slash and you'll get a $500 what? new driver <laughs> bonus after you complete 100 rides in 30 days. That's unbelievable. That's $500. Go to lyft.com slash ru. That's L-Y-F-T dot com slash R-U. By the, okay, we're back, Michelle. So you're still investigating the train. By the I'm time just saying, by the, time to where, by the time we get to where we're going... We could have, have been there already. No, no, no. Not sitting in traffic. Tra- not at that time of day. If the show time's at seven, that is the... We need to leave at one to exactly. take 18 trains. Exactly. To sit... No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to be investigating okay. the train. Okay, please do. I'm I can't wait to see what you come up train. with. Please do. Yeah. Come on, ride the train. Now, um, okay. So, um, Dennis O'Hare's... You know, he really impresses me so much because of the... Act. I. You know, I wish while I was playing dress up, some I should have been in some acting classes. Oh, you and me both. Here's you know? the thing: all I cared about was being a singer, being mm. a musical theater actress, and not being a theater actress. Mm. So every time it was time for straight acting classes, I'd be like, "Ugh, whatever. Can I go sing? Right. Uh, I just want to go perform a song." And I didn't take it seriously. And I've been in acting classes my whole life. Sure, but the commitment to Allowing yourself to actually go there in front of these people uninhibited in a way that in a safe space, by the way, where you can literally explore all the elements of your of your emotional personality. Yeah, that is really it's such a great gift it to is. be able to do that and then be able to do it publicly. But you think you could still do I mean, you know, you're at a certain age. You think you, that 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 muscle is still uh, pliable is it atrophy? Do you think? I don't. I don't think it's atrophied because the older I get, the more I realize I don't care. So when I was in my twenties, I cared about what people thought that I looked like on camera. Mm. I cared that if I looked a certain way, I wouldn't be as pretty. Mm. You know. Um, I think now, being a parent, having lost parents, I'm able to tap into stuff that maybe I wasn't willing to tap into. Do I so still? You're gonna, have... go, you're gonna go for them, Geraldine Page roles? No. I'm going to go for the Meryl Streep bro, girl. What you talking about? <laughs> Shit. Um, I think that I'd like to see what I can handle. Yeah. I'd like to put myself out there and really go for it. Because I think that because of my big personality and my big tits and everything else, yeah. I'm going to be always looked at for comedy. Right. But I think that I have that dramatic flair. Somebody cast this woman in the role of Carrie's mother. Pl- with big tits in, in, as Carrie's mother. Um, I can strap them down. Okay. All Boys right. Don't Cry Part 2. Hey, hey. I can do it. Orange is the new black girl. Okay, what? Orange is the new strap them down the, girl. What? <laughs> Litchfield, I'm coming for you. Don't sleep on her. Uh-huh. <laughs> what about you? I think because you have always been your persona. Now, you've done some drama. Yeah, would but you like to have a real meaty I would love role? to. You know, um, because out of drag, I'm, I've got carte blanche to... Really get ugly. Right. Are you willing to? Oh, oh, hell yeah. I got nothing to lose. I got, my legacy is set. My legacy is, is set up with these queens on Drag Race. Why I am we... forever going to be Miss RuPaul. Miss Paul, can you cast me on Drag Race? Miss pa- Miss Ruth? Uh, Miss Ruth Paul. Why don't we write something? Or... It ain't that easy, Hold girl. Hold on. I'm, I'm gonna t- I t- did you see me backpedaling? <laughs> did I you, stutter? Did you see me? T- did I stutter? <laughs> Is there something on my face? <laughs> Trying to take it back. So I was going to say, why can't we, me, you, maybe a couple other people, do a night of one acts or monologues or something that we can put up ourselves and show what we can do. I know it sounds like a lot of work to you. I can see your eyes no, blazing I can, I'm, over. I'm just trying to think of the rehearsal time because you know it won't be that bad. Oh, but you have to you have to learn all the lines and shit. Who was that? Oh, who was that sent me a line? Uh, uh, oh, someone. I'm going off here. I'm speaking like we speak. You okay. know, non sequiturs. Someone sent me a an email talk having watched listened to our show mm-hmm. this podcast talking about um, learning lines. Actually, let me find it. Oh, to computer. help us. It's an app. 
I'm going to find Shut it. And I'll up. say the girl's name, too, on here. because she's an app. She's listening. I'm sure she's listening right now. Okay. Let me look to find the, the email. She has an app that helps people l- learn lines. How, how do you It's do- not hers, but she said that she has... Has it helped her? She's heard us talking about learning lines on this podcast. Which we've done a lot. And I'm finding, now that I'm learning songs for this one woman show, the only way that I can learn is repetition. It's the only way. Uh-huh. Absolute only way. And and my husband was telling me that um, Anthony Hopkins says, you know, he was talking on a, inside the actor studio, I think, about learning lines and when you own them. And he said that when he gets them, like if he gets his, his script and he starts reading, he doesn't start working on his lines. He reads it and then rereads it and then rereads it again until it starts becoming. Uh-huh. And he's understanding. Yeah. And it's interesting because for me, obviously the only way you can learn is repetition. Some people, like my daughter Lola is so good. Boom, she's done. Yeah. For me, I have to understand why I'm saying it like it has to make sense. Well, that's where the rehearsal comes in. That's why you have to do it over and over and over and over. So what's the app? Uh, okay, let me get the internet connection. I'm just getting my uh, thing out of here. But uh, uh, she, she says, you know, she's an actress and that she... Um, does uh, she have issues with learning lines too? I think she does. She said this thing um, allows you to... Could you use it for everything, not just line learning? Um, well, we'll, we can, we'll see here. Okay. Here's my internet connection. Um, let me see. Hopefully I'm sure, I'm sure I didn't, um, delete this poor girl's, um, email. It's, um, okay. I'm, I'm sure you didn't right here. Uh, tell me what it's all about. All right. Here Healthy. we go. Yeah. Um, good afternoon. Uh, <laughs> good afternoon, sir. Kind sir. Okay. Um, okay. So, um, maybe it's not here anymore. Uh, uh, partners in. I have an idea. Okay. I've got Google app that helps you learn lines. Are you kidding? Uh, it's working together. I have to cut through all these emails. People I know that's the problem. You stuff. have too many. And uh, is it called rehearsal the app? Maybe. Maybe. Let me. Um. Okay. Y'all just bear with us here real um, quick. Uh, rehearsal uh, the app. Need to rehearse your lines. I wonder if that's it. Maybe. Why can't I find... You know, what is that? I can't find emails when I want to. There's Line Learner and there's Rehearsal the app. Let's see. Line Learner. We can always edit this part out. Yeah. Because it sounds very exciting. Yeah, it does. I'm sure. Uh, Hang on. Line Learner. Scenes. It's $3.99. Uh-huh. Then there's Line Learner Light. He said he's looking at the email he forwarded you. It's Lion Learner. Oh, he forwarded me. I'm okay. That's what's the problem. You, see, you should you have said, looking, "Hey, bitch." Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he, edit that part out, and our, then we'll pick it up our here. Our producer forwarded me this. That's why I can't find it because I'm looking for a girl's name. I need to look at his damn name. Right. And what is his name, Michelle? Alex. Oh, here it is. It's right here. Yeah, here. Oh, it says this app actually looks. Oh, that's him talking right now. Her name is Amy <laughs> Collier. And the app is called, um, um, I'm getting caught up on all the podcasts now, but Ruin This Show, we're talking about how to learn lines recently. Since I'm always doing a show, musicals, thank you very much, I need all the help I can get when I learn lines. There's a great app called Line Learner. All right. I pay for the full version because it's not that expensive. It's $3.99. Okay, but you can, but in this thing, you can record yourself the other parts and then play back only your cue lines or play back the entire scene. Or you can play your cue lines, speak your line aloud, and then play the line back. To you, whatever you you guys get, yeah, yeah, whatever. So I guess you can speak it. In. <laughs> she says she's just throwing it out there. Her name is Amy Collier. She's a a m i e e collier dot com. Oh, so, I love it. Yes, there's other ones like uh, Rehearsal Pro, which is twenty dollars, but it looks like it's worth it. Like you know, if you're working all the time and doing show after show, something like twenty bucks is worth it. Well, you know that's the thing. You're saying put up some one uh, one act show. I guess I got to go to work. You know, that's the thing. I, I actually We can make some money from it. I don't think you can make money from doing a night of one act. Of course you can. You do more than one night or you do two in one day or do a weekend. Yeah, I hear you, Michelle. No, but you, you know, obviously I, my don't. ass is old and I got other jobs to do. I can't be rehearsing no lines. Okay. You got to learn them lines, though. I got to learn the lines. What if you was thing. on a TV show? Well, on a TV show, as you well know, you don't have to learn your lines. You do your shots. 
<laughs> you just and they and uh, people don't know how this works. Is I mean, I told you, I told you this already. But when you do a scene with somebody, you do. When I do a scene with someone, we block it and we say the lines, and then probably the camera's going to be on her first, and I say the lines. And then by the time they get around to the close-ups, I've done it so many times with blocking, I've already learned the lines. Yeah. Because I can learn lines through blocking. Right. It's, it's, um, I think that's why they do. Like blocking. Well, blocking for the camera. Correct. So and they know and where blocking you're on a, in a musical or in a play as well. Yeah. You know where you're supposed to be by this song, by this line. Sure. If you ain't there, you're doing something wrong. Yeah. I just think that theater keeps that. You mean theater. Theater keeps that fresh. Absolutely. That's why Dennis O'Hare is so brilliant. He he got it. He learned the hard yards that got the chops on Broadway. And, in, and same with all Musicals of the great as ones. Well. He was in Once Upon a Mattress oh, okay. and some other ones. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, it's keeping fresh. And sometimes you don't have the time to be able to be in a scene study class. Yeah. So you have to work on your own and it's pushing yourself to make sure you work on your own. Yeah. You know? Well, we're going to take Dennis break actually right. won a Tony Award too, I believe. Did he? Yeah. Oh, I have to ask him about it. Well, we're going to take a break real quick, but when we come back, what's going to happen? Dennis O'Hare. Yes. Michelle, you know how much I love my therapist. Oh, honey, could we live without it? I really couldn't. I love it. I think everybody should have a therapist. And, you know, now everybody can because of talk space. And back in the day when you said, oh, my God, I couldn't live without my, my therapist, it sounds so elitist. Yeah. And so LA. Right. It is no now it's just a necessity. It's a necessity. Is everybody that, yeah. needs a it's like a commit everybody needs a committee to turn to when they're gonna make a decision. Yes. I heard some girl say something the other day that she made the choice to do something. I thought, didn't anybody stop you? Right, exactly. You know? Where are these people? Why are they right. not stopping you? Well, now you have somebody. Talkspace. Now you can go to talkspace.com slash Rue or download their app. Then you're going to speak with a Talkspace therapist representative. And you, that's where you're going to say, I am this person. This is what I want. This is what I'm looking for. Your goals for therapy, et cetera. Then you're going to pick a plan and be assigned a therapist that best fits your need. Now, the cool thing is, it's like those moments what Rue was just talking about. Girl, where was your committee? Yes. Why did anybody stop you? Right. It is as close as... As texting on your phone. Brilliant. It is so, so smart. You, sometimes you're thinking, I don't want to sit in a therapy session for half an hour or an hour. With Talkspace, you don't have a you don't have to see a professional once a week, but someone's right there at your fingertips to be there for you consistently when you need it. And someone can always, always talk to you. I love the idea of being able to text them. That yes. is brilliant because a lot of times these decisions that you have to make, I can really speak English I got actually. You. Um, decisions. You know, they're, they're in the, the moment. They're in the moment where you need someone to say, what do you think about this? This. Yes. That's why Talkspace is such an important app to have. And sometimes your friends are at work, they're underground, wherever that they can't get signal. Sometimes it's just a sketchy area. And sometimes they're in jail. Sometimes they're in prison. Yes. And they don't got their phone. Right. Well, with that said, with Talkspace, you don't have to worry about any of that because they get back to you right away. For $30 off your first month, go to Talkspace.com slash Rue, or you can download the Talkspace app on the Apple or the Android app store and use the offer code RU. With Talkspace, just know... You are never You are never alone, you honey. Are no, you alone. are not alone. Hey. <laughs> We've got our special guest here. Dennis O'Hare is a character actor who has just been tearing it up for years. Yeah. I he came to, to he, he came to me from Law and Order Criminal Intent. Oh my god. Playing was I playing a killer priest? Was I playing a schizophrenic homeless person or was I playing a racist white supremacist all of the above i've yeah. seen wow. all of those yeah. yes yeah. and you do it so well now i guess they pluck the best of broadway talent to be on their show because it's used to new york it's an amazing show um all new york actors get a shot at it we all feel like if you don't pre appear in law and order your career is over yeah you have to yeah. have been on at least true. nine episodes to yeah. be a new yorker yeah. yeah well i mean and that really that's what brought you to my attention what came before that because i know you were on broadway and take me out and and uh uh were you in um assassins i did assassins i did sweet charity i did cabaret originally on broadway now don't get started with the music Please theater sorry over sweet here charity and i'm like ah! oh. Oh, one of my favorite musicals. I love Sweet Charity. Yeah. You know, I, it's funny. I'm, I, I was a non-musical theater actor for the most of my life. And then I kind of stumbled into musicals again with Cabaret. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I did Assassins and Sweet Charity. And now I've sort of fallen out of musicals again. Mm -hmm. Although I did Into the Woods um, in 2012. Who were you? I was the baker. Oh, I had a great time. Amy I, Adams. You can, you can sing those Sondheim songs? I Yeah. I'm, a, I'm an old Irish tenor. I mean, I've, yeah. I've got the notes and I've got the stuff. I just don't have the, oddly enough, the confidence. 
I don't wait. I'm what not, is that? No, I'm, you I'm, know I'm, they have adult diapers for that. They, are you kidding back me? Back to yeah. Boniva. Yeah. <laughs> um, I uh, I I believe in my acting, but my singing I'm not quite as as, as confident about. And uh, to huh. be a Broadway singer, you have to be in love with your voice. Mm. And I'm such a great um, opera fan that mm-hmm. I don't love my voice, and so I hear it and I go. Ugh. That's not quite good enough. Mm. Acting, I have no problem. I, yeah. I'm, I'm at home in the middle of a stage. I, I never question myself. But singing, I used to always have problems. And so I don't enjoy musicals as much. Anymore. Yeah. Now, I want to talk about acting, but uh, but I want to continue with your, your trajectory in this business because I, I saw you on Law and & Order and then I saw you in Michael Clayton. And that's when I thought, yeah. that's the guy right there. That was fun. You know, it's funny. I, I did a movie called um, The Anniversary Party mm-hmm. with Alan Cumming and Jennifer Jason Lee, which is sort of my oh, first of my biggish movie. And then I did um, uh, Garden State, mm-hmm. uh, Zach Braff's movie. And that was my other sort of big movie that I did before that. But Michael Clayton was funny. It was a movie where I was auditioning for a bigger part and I asked to go for a smaller part mm-hmm. because I felt like that was more of my role. And the interesting thing about anniversary about that movie is Julie White played my oh, wife. Oh, she's brilliant. She has no lines and stood behind me and just emanated, you know, anger and loathing of her husband. Uh-huh. And it finally, at one point, shattered a glass on on the counter. We shot that thing at three in the morning in Long Island in some guy's house, and Clooney had just won an Oscar and came back carrying the statuette into the room while we were shooting. <laughs> He was like, um, okay, Dennis, go. And I'm like, oh my God. Right. <laughs> Wait, who had just won an Oscar? Clooney. George oh, Clooney. George Clooney. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. You know, Julie White, who's br- another brilliant amazing, New York actor. Amazing. You know, I saw her in What the Dog? Little, the Little Dog the Laughed. Little, the Little Dog Laughed. Yeah. Yes, yeah. brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. Okay, so, and then Michael Clayton, everybody in Hollywood said, get me that kid. Get me that kid. Well, you know, it's, it's funny. I'm a character actor, so I don't always fit every part. I mean, the irony is I can fit any part Mm -hmm. but people always don't know what to do with you don't always know what to do with you so people would try me out Mm -hmm. I got a lot of people coming in looking at me and kind of going hey can you do this can you Mm -hmm. do that Mm -hmm. for us the kiss of death is when somebody in an audition says wow you're great (laughs) that means you're not going to get hired really it just means you're not getting the job yet the more they compliment you the more you're not going to get the job so Curtis Hansen called me once for something and he was kind of like wow where wait wow you're fantastic you can do anything Uh which means you're not getting this oh dear (laughs) yeah oh my goodness yeah and you have worked nonstop ever since Michael Clayton I feel very lucky I did another movie with Tony Gilroy um we did a movie called Duplicity with um Julia Roberts and Clive Owen I did a movie with Mike Nichols called uh, Charlie Wilson's War. Yes. Um, I did Milk with Gus Van Sant and Sean Penn. Um, I also did uh, 21 Grams with Sean Penn. Oh, I've seen all of those movies and you're Um, so great. And you're memorable in all of them. And he's been working. You've been working forever. I've been alive forever. No, but you haven't. You're 54. You're young. I'm 54. You know, a mere child. You are. Part of it is I I do feel lucky to have gotten great roles. I feel um, I also keep pushing to reinvent myself. I write my own material. I write screenplays. I write books. I write plays. I write a play for myself because you, 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 as an actor, you can't sit back and wait. You have to be foot forward. You have to always be making it happen for yourself. And I also, I memorize my lines. Mm-hmm. I show up on time. I'm nice to people. Something to be said about that. <laughs> I work really hard. I'm telling you, half of acting is show up on time, know your lines, and be nice to the crew. Yeah. Because that gets you asked back. I've said that a million times. Yep. A million times. Say it a million show more. up on time, be prepared, don't complain. That And people yeah. will keep hiring you because like, who do you want to spend six weeks with? Exactly. You know? Yeah. And also, who's, who is, who's not going to cost you time and money? Right. You know, the guy who you look at and you kind of go, oh, Dennis is good. He'll know, he knows what he's doing. We can shoot him out in an hour. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then we can focus on the problem person in front of you, and they take four hours to get through. Yeah. And, and yeah. talking about what you said earlier, you went in, you had a bigger part, and you decided, you know what, I'm more of this other yeah. part here. And that's also smart. And then you're flexible. Because, you know, another key to, to being not just in the show business, but in life, mm-hmm. speaking of Boniva, is being able to be flexible. The inverse. Yes. You know, exactly. and also, and, and we talked about Madonna and how, what an amazing career she oh, has. Amazing. But she reinvents herself. You know, I think Gaga does that. She reinvents herself. And as an actor you have to reinvent yourself Mm -hmm. you know Blair Brown is a really good friend of mine and I watch her career and she has always done amazing work and she's suffered the indignity of having people forget who she is 
and she has to go back in and re say reintroduce herself. And she's say, Molly Dodd. Molly Dodd. Yeah. Exactly. Molly, um, she did um, the Secret Rapture, written for her by David Hare. Mm-hmm. Um, she's now doing Orange Is the New Black. Mm-hmm. So this new generation so is going. Who is that amazing actor? You go. Well, that's Blair Brown. Yeah. Who she did Fringe for like five years, yeah. a sci-fi show. Mm-hmm. But she has no. Um, preciousness about it Mm -hmm. she'll go in and go you know you need me to teach you who i am i'll teach you who i am sure i'll audition for you i'll go into a room i'll audition for anybody i will do what i'll tap dance sing whatever i have to do to get the job because i love doing it yeah yeah now and of course most audiences today know you from true blood and from american horror story how did you get to that first of all how did you get to meet uh was it alan Paul and then Alan Ball, Alan Ball, Alan Ball. Ball. Yeah. and then uh, uh, Ryan, Ryan Murphy. Murphy. How do those things happen? You know, both were accidental. Um, the I was in Budapest shooting a movie called The Eagle um, with Channing Tatum. That was fun. Mm-hmm. And um, I was wearing Roman leather garb and um, in, Budapest. in Budapest. In Budapest, yeah. and I got a phone call from my agent, and my agent's a fantastic New York type, and he likes to be dramatic. And he goes, um, "Hello, <laughs> how would you?" Like to be the vampire king in the true true blood the hit show on HBO. <laughs> and I was like, I would like that very much. They they basically came to me. I had an agent in an LA who said, You need to hire Dennis O'Hare. Huh. And they were like, well, okay, we'll, we'll hire him. And they made an offer and I did that show. And Ryan Murphy um had seen me and take me out because a lot of big Hollywood showrunners and writers are theater fans. Sure. So they all come to New York and they see the shows. He'd seen me years ago and take me out. He loved me in the show and I guess had thought about me for a while. And when he had a part that he thought was good for me, he called me up and he goes, read my script. Would you want to be in my show, American Horror Story? Is it a partner guy named Larry? Half his face is burnt off. Mm -hmm. Um, He may or may not have killed his family. I don't know if he's going to live. I was like, yeah, I'm in. Let's do it. Wow. Wow. That was it. That was it. So when a showrunner, writer, person like that doesn't know what the character's going to do, does that excite you or does it get you scared thinking, I don't know how long I'm going to be around? You know, both. It's really exciting to not know what's going to happen. And I always say to people, you know, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Is that the truth? Well, yeah. Why should a character know where they're going? Mm -hmm. We don't know where we're going. Mm -hmm. We have no idea what's happening next year. Mm -hmm. So why should a character know? At the same time, you know, I've got a kid. I've got a mortgage. I live in New York. Uh I have to commute to L.A. So for me not to know what I'm going to be doing in the next two months is a pain because do I move? Right. Do I go back? Do I fly myself back and forth? Yeah. So it's, it's a little of both. I mean... I think most actors are adrenaline junkies Mm -hmm. and we love the idea of security, but we also hate the idea of being trapped. So, you know, to be in a nine to five job would be death for me. I couldn't do it. You know what I was saying to Dennis when we were uh, sitting there? I was talking about how, of course, I've known him from a, a million other things. Sure. But Russell Edgington, is that his last name? Yeah, Russell oh my God, Edgington, yeah. Mm, Russell yeah. Edgington is really where I became entranced by his acting because Dennis has a gift that a lot of, a lot of actors do not possess, mm-hmm. are not able to tap into, and only the greats have it. And he has the ability to be in evil, mm-hmm. but yet <laughs> there's a love inside of that evil mm-hmm. that makes you want so much more of him. Mm-hmm. And that's really what that character Russell was all about. He was so loving, but so evil. What I know, that's a, it's a perfect example of someone who's really trained and really knows what they're doing. Where right. did you train? Uh, Northwestern. Uh, they have a great program. My teacher is a guy named David Downs. He was taught by a woman named Elvina Kraus, who came from the Stanislavski school. So people are always like, "Are you a method actor?" And I'm like, "Well, you know, Stanislavski is not method, but it's the first method." And Stanislavski basically says. Who are you? Where you come from? Where are you going? What did you eat this morning? What What do you fear? But that what is do method, you love? Isn't it? It's a It's a form of the method. Yeah. The method says more about where did I come from this morning, whereas mm-hmm. we're always going to the character. So Stanislavski oh, okay. says, "You're boring." Who is the character? Mm-hmm. Whereas method says, "I'm amazing." What do I think about right. this? Right. But you know, I, I do. I feel bad for actors who I meet who don't have training because they don't have the tools available to pick up when they get into trouble. Right. Because negotiating a set is all about getting out of trouble. You know, how do you manage that moment when the director says the same thing to you five times and you you don't think you're giving him what he wants? You need technique. You need a tool. You need some way to get out of it. Or when somebody is, frankly, 
messing with you on a set and you have to figure out how to how to negotiate with them. Right. Does that yeah. happen? I don't think anyone does it intentionally mm. to be mean. I think people are in survival mode on a set. And so many times you have to figure out how to help them survive and you survive at the same time. Mm. Mm. Right, you right. Know. Now, in your process of, of becoming an actor and studying, how far into it did you think, oh my goodness, I got this. I understand what I understand what I'm doing. I I don't know if that ever happened. Oh, uh, come I, on. No, 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 I'm not being modest. I really do. I almost quit twice. I was going to quit when I was 24 because I was also a poet. I, I was a poetry major in school, which is that would have gotten incredibly far, lucrative. Right? Yep. Well, it's like, uh, like <laughs> there once was a man from Nantucket. That's exactly um, what it's poet. like. Yeah. yeah, that would be that'd be more um, um, formal poetry. Ah. That's, that's actually, I do. I did more free verse. We didn't look for the rhyme. Uh, but, spoken um, word. Spoken word. Yeah. Slow jam. <laughs> But, you know, I, I was going to quit a couple of times because being an actor is also miserable oh, yeah. because it's insecure. You are always looking for validation. And I thought I could be a lawyer. I could be I could be, you know, uh, I could be a missionary. I mean, mm -hmm. there's so many things I could be. But I'm a true actor because I love it so much. Mm -hmm. And I'm the most alive when I'm in the middle of a stage or when I'm in character. And I, I can't, I'm addicted to it. I, mm -hmm. I can't, I can't give that up. And you I can always it. play a missionary and a lawyer on TV. Exactly. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So at 24, you almost gave it up. When did the big break come? When did you do Take Me Out? And who was, was there a black actor in that who was Daniel really? Daniel Sinjata. Yes. I read all about him in wonderful that. Wonderful actor. Wonderful actor. Beautiful, beautiful man. You know, I was 40 when it did Take Me Out. So wow. it wasn't really my big break. I mean, I, I never really had a major break where it was like, Boom, now I'm on everyone's radar. I just kept working. I worked off Broadway. I worked regional theater. I did every regional theater and just kind of like steadily gained credits. I did my Broadway debut in 94 in a play called Racing Demon by mm -hmm. David Hare um, at mm -hmm. uh, Lincoln Center. Not a big part, a little mm -hmm. teeny part. Opening night, I fell on my face, literally made my oh. entrance and was like, bam, oh. on my face, got back up, kept going. Yeah. Um, oh my God. I mean, you, you, just, you just gotta keep going. Yeah. You gotta keep yeah. going. Gotta laugh. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't a funny play. Um, <laughs> it was in that moment. <laughs> it was in that moment. And Dennis O'Hare makes a splash on his debut. <laughs> so much for my big opening. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Oh, the biggest opening. But you know, oh. Oh. <laughs> um, the big one. But you know, I, 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 I do feel like I've had a steady, steady, steady string of, of successes. I've been gifted with getting great roles. And Michelle and I were talking about this. You don't always get a great match between character and actor. Mm -hmm. And when you do, you take off. Mm -hmm. You think of any great you know, debut actor, you, they, they get that character they just meld with. I've done that four or five times in my career. I've been very, very lucky to get that. Mm -hmm. And you know, I hope to have a couple more in me, but you never know. And um, I, you know, I, I, I definitely have think a couple in me too. Oh, I've, I've heard, I've read about it <laughs> on the bathroom wall over there. <laughs> you know, Sorry. take me out was definitely getting a Tony puts you on people's radar. You got a Tony a for that? I got a Tony for that. Wow! Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations! Thank you very much. I, I, I got a Tony. I got a drama desk for. Um, Sweet charity. Um, I got. Where did you uh, put the drama desk? Is it in your living room or I, is it in your bedroom? I where don't know where they are. What? It's so bad. I live with a interior designer. My husband is an interior designer, and he likes things to be spare. Of course, yeah. so he does not like tchotchkes. Yes, yes. and so no I think it, I think it's in a box somewhere. Uh. But, it, but it's in a very valuable box. Ah, uh. so now the, we're going to take a, we're going to yeah. take a break. A break, but um, I'm going to give you time. I'm going to give you time and ask this question before the break because I want to cool. hear the answer is that you know having the success you have and having had a long career on Broadway and just you know the hard yards with all yeah. these other actors you mentioned uh, Blair Brown you mentioned uh, I'm sure there's tons them seeing you break through how do you negotiate those relationships when you go back to New York and you see them and everybody's and you say and they say oh we're so happy for you and you right. say well I'm happy what are you working on and they say actually I'm not working on anything um right. I want to know how you negotiate that. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with mo more Dennis O'Hare. Hey, girl, you ready? You can use some extra money. How could you? I mean, doesn't everybody? <laughs> My last name is not Kardashian. 
<laughs> of course, I need extra money. Well, that's where Lyft comes in. Lyft is a ride sharing app that lets you be your own boss. Now, every, of course, knows the pink mustaches that Lyft has. Who doesn't you know? love a mustache ride? And everybody loves a mustache ride. Yeah. Now, with Lyft, you get to pick your own hours. You get to earn up to fifteen hundred bucks a week by driving your own car. That's unreal. And unlike any other ride share app, uh huh. Follow oh, my eyes. Uh huh. Look at me. Look at me. Uh huh. Lyft has a tip button in the app, so users actually tip. And with the Lyft drivers, they get to keep 100% of the tips. and not have to share with any owners or anything like that. And with Lyft, you don't have to wait for paychecks. With Express Pay, once you have over 35 bucks in your account, you can cash out at any time. And just by the way, Lyft hasn't used political protests as an opportunity to surge prices and profit, whereas Lyft decided as a company to donate more than $1 million to the ACLU. Now, that is really Fabulous. Yeah. And we've got a special offer for you. Michelle, tell them all about it. Sign up today at lyft.com. That's L-Y-F-T dot com slash Rue. And you'll get a $500 new driver bonus after you complete 100 rides within 30 days, which you all know, which is super. I think I've done that in one day. Yeah, exactly. So get $500 right now. Go to lyft.com slash Rue and sign up to become a driver today. Team Lyft. Yay. Yeah. We, we're we back with Dennis O'Hare. You guys are talking about Sweet Charity. Sweet Charity. Yes. You played Oscar. in it was with, with Christina Applegate. We started in Minneapolis, and then we did Chicago, and then we did Boston, in all in February. It was the coldest oh out-of-town tryout in the world. Mm. She broke her foot right? in Chicago, and then um, Charlotte D'Amboise had to cover for her, and we closed out of town in Boston. Oh, and then no. Christina found the money, and we came in anyway, and we opened in New York on Broadway. Wow, and how yeah. long did you last in Broadway? We left nine months. No. Oh, wow. Is, you know, wow. That, that, that's something. Who did the costumes Nothing. for that? Oh, William Ivy Long. Yeah, because yeah. I because I want to see Bob Mackie yeah. do the costumes yeah. for Sweet Charity. Well, yeah. William Ivy yeah. Long is close to Bob Mackie. Oh, really? Yeah, he, he's as close as you can get without being Bob Mackie. And, right, you, you play know. the Sammy Davis Jr. role? Um, I No, I play Oscar, who is this sort of like crazy neurotic guy. He's a uh. really sort of uptight guy who, who Charity falls in love with. Oh, wow, yeah. wow. It was... um. John I don't remember McMartin. who did it in the... Oh, John, oh, John McMartin. Yeah, yeah. He just died. Yeah, I know. Oh, I love John McMartin. He's a lovely man. He, uh, lovely you know, man. I, of course, I know him from Murder, She Wrote and The Golden Girls. <laughs> yeah. Because on this the Golden, earlier. Yeah. Because on The Golden Girls, um, he plays the priest yeah. who Dorothy goes on a date with and he comes and she doesn't know he's a priest until he gets to the house and he says, they're very uncomfortable and she walks out and he says, well, Dorothy, you look fantastic. And she's like, you're kidding. I look like the mother of a solid gold dancer. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant line there. <laughs> okay, so now before the break, I asked yep. you about negotiating your success with some of your friends who may not be as successful as you are, the people from the old neighborhood yeah. or who you went to Northwestern with. How do you negotiate those relationships having so much success? There's a, a coded language among actors. You never, ever, ever ask an actor what they're doing, mm -hmm. ever. You always say, how are you? Yeah. And if they say... I'm good. I'm good. You know, um, yeah, my, my, my wife and I we went up to uh, upstate last week. You know, they're not working. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. right. Because they will always leave with their job. Yes. How are you? Uh, I'm doing a show uh, right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing, um, um, so here's true. the flyer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you let them lead you and you never brag about work. Right. You know, how are, and if you're working a lot, they say, how are you? Go, good, good. You know, I'm, 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 I'm hanging in there. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm here and there. I'm, I'm doing some stuff. And, but the classic New York thing in New York, they always kind of go, so are you here or there? Uh-huh. Where, uh -huh. where are you? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were there. Are you here? Okay. Yeah. I'm here for a while, then I'm going to be there. Are you yeah. living there or here? Yeah. Yeah. That's the big New York thing. But because I do believe in a form of humility because you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. In either direction. Tomorrow, you could suddenly literally be out of work. Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. you could suddenly get that series that breaks through mm -hmm. good example david harbour lovely actor. oh my god i guess such I a crush him. on him another uh law and order alumni but great <laughs> actor i mean you know great actor and now he's doing this thing stranger things yeah yeah and he is the lead on it and he's great he deserves it he's wonderful and i'm and so matthew happy Modine's for him is well. he on that too oh, who is god. Matthew, matthew Modine. Modine. Yeah. oh god exactly yeah he's great so good but you know everyone like that i mean you know i, did, I remember doing a good wife with Corey stoll mm -hmm. and he played a limo driver and i was like hey he's a good guy he's a, yeah. he's a good actor you yeah. know bam uh -huh. he takes off and the thing with Corey is he's still Corey. he, yeah. he hasn't changed for the most part i think the new york acting community is incredibly generous with each other incredibly um, nice to each other and incredibly collegial. Right. You don't feel a great sense of, oh, you've been left in the dust mm -hmm. or 
now that I'm here, I can't talk to you. Everyone is still human being, you know, struggling. Right, right. But did you ever feel that way? You know, did anyone cut in front of line for you and they became a big success and you thought, look at her. Yeah. Look at her. It, and it I'm wasn't her. her. How did you know? <laughs> it wasn't her. Really? I mean, you know, all I'll say is that when I was nominated for Tony, you do this awful thing where you do on a Wednesday before a matinee, you do this press round. Yeah. And it was for CBS. And I remember, I won't name the name. Uh huh. A woman was nominated for Tony as, well, Tony as well. And she and her publicist literally stepped on my feet to get in front of me uh-huh. and turned and said, um, she's got a matinee. Oh, right. And I said, Ew. Yeah. And I said uh-huh. Well, I do too, but clearly your matinee is more important uh-huh. than mine. Good uh-huh. for you. So why, why, don't, why don't you go ahead? Yeah. yeah. But I've never forgotten that. Yeah. I've never forgotten. Have you seen her since? Um, not much because she's not working. Uh-oh. Oh, sorry. I let you say it. No sorry. name. No name. Sorry yeah. about it. No, I think everyone has experienced that. You know, even in my career, I've, I've, I've been up, I've been down. Yeah. I'll be up and I'll be down again. It's just the nature of the beast. But um, again, it's, it's about humility, you know. Yeah. But I do have to say, though, uh, there are a lot of people who are not happy. They make it very known that they're they're not necessarily jealous because jealousy is about three people. It's in, they envy you, you know, and yeah. you can feel it. And it actually makes you feel bad about your, because then you think actually. Wait, jealousy is about three people? Yeah, jealousy is three people. Envy is two people. Did you I know that? I didn't know that. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why can't you just be jealous of one person? Well, maybe if the third well, if the third that's party a stalking, I think. yeah, that's good stalking. Yeah, <laughs> I'm quite familiar Obsession. with that one. Yeah, no, that's that's how that's the definition. And oh. but I guess the jealousy, uh, I guess, in, if the third person is the success, maybe that's the third party. You know, I've definitely felt envy and jealousy in my life, and I hate it. I hate when I feel that because I think, why would you ever begrudge anyone else success? Um, and when I feel that, I, I have to look at myself and kind of think, what are you, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. Why, why would you do that? And yeah. I think about the person and think about how much I like them and think about how happy I am for them. It's definitely our own issues. You know? well, that's, yeah, totally. yeah. well, that's a great point because through the process of learning acting or slants, I can't even say it. Stanislavski. Yeah, and method. You understand your own character and you can yeah. step away from your character and go, what is my character doing? Why right. is it feeling this feeling? Now, you've got a kid. How yeah. do you? Um, how are you as a parent? I hope I'm a good parent. I, I just keep hoping I'm not ruining him. I just keep how thinking, old is oh he? my God, is this when I'm breaking him? You're not. He's five. Five. Yeah, he's five. He is um, beautiful, smart, uh, charismatic, confident, delightful i mean he, he's just a crazy 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 kid i love you you love kids in an unpredictable way i, I mean it's, it's a different kind of organ you have for kids you your, can't your explain love for it them is, unless you're you you get you a different really kind can. of heart it's yeah really, because really you weird. don't love somebody else's kid no the way you love no. like i can be that mother on the plane that hears kids client crying going shut your kid up even though <laughs> yeah. i've been that mother with yeah. screaming yeah. children but when it's your kid it's a different feeling i can't imagine i see i'd be afraid that i would fall in love with the kid too much to where it'd be dangerous and i it falls so deep in love that i couldn't get back out of no, it. you do it's scary you do you look at them you kind of go oh look away look away i do know that <laughs> I know that I have, you know, I, I lose my sense of taste and I have no no more taste anymore when it comes to anything to do with kids. Mm. Yeah. I will weep at any bad TV movie if there's a kid involved. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I can't. I can't, oh. I can't watch kids being hurt, oh. tortured. Can't, but even I, I the happy things yeah. as a parent, you're going to start when you start. You weep. Yeah. Like even that, like. When your kid goes up and sings their first choral concert yeah. or learns how to play yeah. one note on the violin. Well, see, I would all cry, taste. Yeah, I would yeah. cry yeah. that watching that without being a parent. Yeah. But I would you just, do. I'm the, I, That's because you're the mother of us all. I'm, I'm the mother of, of, of all. I'm the mother of the house of RuPaul. You are. I'm the mother of the house of RuPaul. You are. Um, uh, it's, I don't know. I, I'm, I, I think at this point, it's probably too late in the game for me. I do enjoy my peace and quiet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to miss that. I do love that. I love going to sleep. You should get a timeshare kid. <laughs> Where, where can I get one of those? Um, I've got two. Anytime you you'd like two. to, please. <laughs> oh my God, a five year. So you you live in New York. Why haven't you? You're making lots of money. Why don't you buy a place out here too? Just a pee at a chair. You know, a little something. Yeah. I I I I I actually rent a place out here that I am invested in with other people. So mm. I kind of do that. But I'm a New Yorker. I really am. Where do you I, live in New I, York? Brooklyn. In Brooklyn? Yeah. In the BK? In the BK. Same apartment for 18 years. Oh I've been in Brooklyn God. for 21 years. Wow. wow. A long, long time in Brooklyn. What neighborhood in Brooklyn? Fort Green. Fort right Green. Now. Oh, that's yeah. nice over there. Yep. I'm now, the L train's not right. Is it, is it stopped yet? 
Well, the L is Williamsburg. Luckily, I'm the Q. Okay, I'm the Q. Two, right. three, um, and the uh, the F, and also the G. Yeah, the L is going to stop next year. That'll next be a year, nightmare. For it's going to be a nightmare. So yeah. you grew up in Detroit. Yeah. yeah, you went to school in Chicago. Yeah, and then you moved right out of school to New York City. Uh, I was in Chicago for a while doing theater. I did a mm-hmm. lot of non-equity theater and uh, bartended and waited tables. Mm-hmm. And then temp because I got fired from waiting tables because I yelled at my manager. Mm. Um, Irish temper. Uh-huh. And then I moved to New York with a show. And I, I, I was breaking up with a boyfriend in Chicago. I left behind a dog, a house, oh. a car, took a suitcase and a boombox, literally, and moved to Must New York. Must have been the 80s. And that was it. It, it was 92. They're close enough. And I still had a boombox. Okay. Yeah, there you go. But um, I had my boombox and my, my suitcase, and that was it. I never came back. Well, I stayed in New York. city in the world. Moved into the East Village. I uh, lived in two places in the East Village, and then went to New York. I went to Brooklyn. I couldn't afford mm-hmm. Manhattan anymore. Yeah. Right. Wow. I love New York. I just, I, it's my kind of city. I like the, I like the brusqueness. I like the shorthand. I like the urbanness of it. I like the fact that at two in the morning, you can kind of go, I need to get that Bram Stoker novel. Yes. Where can I find that? And you go and you buy it. Yeah. Although yeah. only you, know you I mean? would be saying. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah. more like, where can I get that omelet right now? <laughs> exactly. You can, you can get that too. Yeah. You know, two in the morning, four in the morning. Yeah, it's I a little it. different. I love it. I love it too. I still live there. Um, um, and I decided. What part of town are you in? I'm in the West Village, okay. and I've had that place yeah. for 21 years. But um, you know, uh, uh, I decided just this year that I'm not going to complain about the New York change anymore because I was in Europe for vacation in Greece, mm-hmm. and what do you not- mean the change, the the change, the the Giuliani change. You know, oh. the Disney, oh. the yeah, Disney yeah, yeah. vacation. 40 seconds, 40 seconds yeah. yeah, yeah. And but not just yeah. 40 seconds, but even in my neighborhood, there were never kids in my building. There were never kids. That, now there's strollers blocking yeah. uh, doorways That's and all stuff like it. So all yeah. The, yeah, yeah. But um, uh, I decided I'm not going to complain anymore because in Greece, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Right. And you see what's happening with them economically. Right. Right. So now I understand New York evolution. is it's evolution yeah. and it's cyclical and it and and embrace it. Yep. Embrace it. Listen, because I had my time in New York. Yeah. Yeah. I had my time in New York, yeah. the greatest time. In the greatest and, city in the world. And the well, they, city have, in the world. they have cell phones now. Yeah. Oh my they God. Have, they, have the, they, have, they have the satellite. Wait what's a minute. That? I, I'm 18 years in my building and I'm with a condo board and I've been having arguments. And I suddenly realized, oh, you're the grumpy old man on the board. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, you yes. have to sell. Yes. Yes. So I quit the board and I'm going to sell and get out because I just thought I'm the grumpy old guy going, wait, there's a there's a rule about no strollers in the hallway. It's a fire hazard. Someone could trip. We all become our get parents. Out. We all we become like our parents. Yeah. Well, Dennis O'Hara, you were such a joy. And I, I enjoy you. your work so much. Well, I'm, I'm delighted to be here. I'm a fan. I, I watched the show with my friend Doug Wood uh, in Beachwood. <laughs> my 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 bassist Brian Ellingson is a huge fan. We oh, do a show together. That's awesome. uh-huh. He will flip when he finds out I'm on the show. He will flip. Oh, oh I, love I love it. it. And I I think what you're doing is extraordinary. I think it's such a it's such a major a major step for the culture. And I think it's incredibly entertaining. Obviously, yeah, Everyone loves yeah. It. Well, thank you so much and. Thank you for doing our podcast. My pleasure. Oh, that was fun, Michelle. Hey, okay. I'm so in love with him. Until next time. I can't hey, Bye. Bye. <laughs> can I get an amen? If you can't love yourself, how in the hell you're going to love somebody else? Can I get an amen? And don't forget to subscribe on iTunes. If you can't love yourself, how in the hell you're going to love somebody else? Hey.